Hey guys, Tyler Tamerly back with more Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we have not Charlie's Angels, but Dante's Angels. These come to us from Happy Games Factory and their Eden post-apocalyptic line. So this is the starter box, and most of these models I think are available individually on their own, but this guy here in particular, whose name is Leviathan, and we're looking at his rear end, actually I know has a completely alternate model, and I'm curious if they have included the parts here or not. So with Eden, all you really truly need is what's in the starter box. I know my brother's got a Clam Bamaka one that... One of these days, we're going Someday gonna... you'll actually get to see it assembled. One of these days, when we can figure out how to paint it where it doesn't look like a horrible racist caricature, because I, as much as I like it, I just, I'm afraid I can't do it justice. Or appropriateness, I guess. It, it's, it's, it's a product of its times, maybe. So anyway, uh, the new Eden starter sets from Happy Games all include the most updated rule book and obviously this is the English version. I'm assuming there's a French one, but you know, I don't speak French, so I don't need that. So besides Leviathan, we have three other members in our gang. We have Aluka, Lamas, Lamas. Probably Lamas. Lamas. <laughs> but Lamas works. And Fenrir. <laughs> Can I say it more like a white American? One thing that bears mentioning is that despite not having any actual token sheet included, the box itself actually has all of the tokens you'll need printed on the sides. And since it's made out of a bit sturdier cardboard, you can actually just cut them out and they even point out what it says. Like a circular large size hole punch. You just do it. Do Inf they make hole punches that big? Yeah. I don't have one. Okay. Infinity does something similar with its boxes as well. Well, I've learned something new today. So besides the instruction rule book, there's no instructions. What am I talking about? So here is Aluka. We'll take a look at her parts in a sec. <laughs> Lamas. <laughs> Lamas. Lamas. Isn't it Lamas's? Either way, this poor kid has a crappy name. That's why he's got a chainsaw, because he's just getting tormented on the playground so often. All right. And where was Fenri? Fenrir? Big bag of it. No, we already looked at her. No, that's Leviathan. Leviathan! All right, here's Fenrir. Fenrir? Fenrir. Fenrir. And then all of the appropriate stack cards. And this is actually one of the cool things about Eden, if you haven't had a chance to check the game out. Besides having, I, mean, I believe everything is available online. You have all your basic stack cards, but then you have the special rules, extra token sheet, but then you actually have all of the... Uh, quest scenario missions that you can actually play with this faction. So, you know, you can open the bags while I'm sitting here. You can be, you can be my prepper, my fluffer. So, outside of the Leviathan, everybody seems to be on a 30 millimeter base. And this was Aluka. No, and, that's Fenrir. Oh, crap. Is that a mustache he's got? This is Aluka. Hey, right, hold on. Is that a, like a. Handlebar mustache he's got going on there. Is it? I think it is. It is. It is. With face paint, no less. All right. And he's not even a clown. He's not. Them. There is a clown faction in Eden. Which is straight up awesome. Yeah. They're Russian clowns. Even better. He's got a razor bladed hockey stick, it looks like. Oh, it also should be mentioned he's wearing not inline skates, but actual four wheeled roller skates. Because nothing says post-apocalyptic like mohawks, handlebar mustaches, and roller skates. He's already my favorite character. And here's Lamas or Lamaz, or Pregnancy Breathing. And this kid is coming at you with a vengeance, so he's pretty simple. Does he actually have eyes molded down? I like the fact that he's got a chainsaw that literally is almost as big as he is. This kid doesn't have any kind of a... Compensy, compensation issues, if I can figure out the word. And finally, here we have Alucard. Alucard. <laughs> Alucard. You seem human, and yet what do you hear, Aluka? Does she actually have pants? No, nope. she's got a loincloth with a hole in her butt for her swords. That's kind of cool. Now, she does not have roller skates. 
that should be mentioned. She's got regular shoes. She does have a mohawk. And sadly, as a female of the species, she does not have a handlebar mustache either. Let's take a look at Leviathan, then. Let's see if Leviathan, do you have a... Crap. All right, so let's... A nice pile of metal. Now, this is interesting. Check That's this out. pretty nice. The bike itself, I would have expected the bike to be in... A lot more parts than this. Well, that's infinity. <laughs> Were the old GW metal bikes? I don't know. Did they make metal bikes? Or I just, I've forgotten in my old age. Well, I'm assuming this is all like flash in the tire that's going to have to get cleaned out. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. But I mean, the exhausts are on there. This weird piece of metal that I think probably needs to get cut off. Handlebars. It's not in the picture, so yeah. The handlebars. I like the skulls on the... The front there, and I don't know what the little parchment thing is. A map? Leviathan doesn't need a map. Alright, so we have Leviathan himself. Is there a base in here for him? Nope. It looks like he's supposed to be on a 50 millimeter base. I'm guessing. According to the picture of his butt. Okay, now, what the hell is this? A midget in a sack. See, remember I was talking about how I think there was a, an alternate model i'm pretty sure this is what this guy actually is in, from so you can build leviathan with his axe or with a hammer a giant meat tenderizer basically what's this a backpack ultimate backpack okay yeah okay i'm looking at it so you can either have uh what's his name blaster master no, Master, Master Blaster. Blaster. Blaster Master was the old video game from Sunsoft with the frog. I think it was Sunsoft, wasn't it? Probably. Did they reuse the assets to make a Fester's Quest in? Which is another travesty of a video game. Saddle bag. One handlebar. And it's not a mustache. Ooh, let's see. So, I'm assuming one hand goes on the handlebar. Mm -hmm. This one just is loose. Where is it? Ah, okay. There it is. So we have one hand supposed to go on the handle. The other does not. I'm assuming this is a head of some sort. Does he have an alternate head? This is a mohawk with an eye patch. And on the cover, he's wearing a very... Space Marine looking, uh... Is that the other head right there? Yes. What's the dude from, um... Fury Road? Furiosa, right? Uh, no. No. From Morton Joe. Yeah. But he doesn't run Barter Town. He's got that kind of skull mask with the rebreather option attached to it. So, I don't know. What do you think? How should I build him? Oh, mask. Absolutely. Let me say, Unless he's got a handlebar mustache, you gotta go with the mask. But should I build him with the mask and a midget? Yes. Do you have to ask? They don't really go to... Well, you know what? That might be a problem, though, because he's supposed to have the rebreather attached to the backpack. Mm. And it's supposed to be, like, I'm assuming it's some kind of an oxygen tank thing. Sounds like you've got conversion fodder for a Chaos Marine. <laughs> with a, a midget with... I don't even know. Is he holding skulls and heads? I don't know what that is. I think so. I think it's like a trophy rack or something. <clears throat> well, in this same faction... There is a, I don't know if it's a like a trike or a, just a big fat bike with a sidecar with a fat guy sitting in the sidecar and monkeys driving it. He's like a fat dude with his feet up in the sidecar and there's like three or four monkeys on the bike with him. I think I, think I know what my next obscurity and miniature purchase is going to be because nothing says post-apocalyptic awesomeness like fat guys with his monkeys riding motorcycles for him. Eden certainly has some interesting factions to it. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to see if I can find the glue, and we'll try putting these guys together, and, and we'll see what they look like. But, yeah, <laughs> this is an interesting crew here. All right, we've got our Dante's Angel crew all put together, but sadly Barzim had to leave and go home and deal with things. So I was left to build them all on my own. Let's talk a little bit about them. So here is the Leviathan bike. Regardless of who you're going to build him as, whether it's the Behemoth or his Leviathan, 
Uh, there is a lot of flash that was in the spokes of the wheels, and it's like rock solid on the back one. So I'm not sure if I was even supposed to clean it out. I did the front. I'm going to probably further do it, but I'm just going to leave the back as it is. The metal on the bike was really soft, which led to a lot of issues with me trying as I was to clean out that bike. The handlebars had tiny little contact points. I went ahead and glued on the left one because the right one is actually supposed to be in the behemoth's hand here. Now I went with the rebreather as Barzan suggested because this is just too cool to pass up. I didn't bother gluing on his weapon hand. I'm not going to go with the hammer because it's a giant meat tenderizer and why not? Just because once he's actually positioned on the bike and if I could figure out exactly... Eh, sort of kind of like that. And I'm going to put him on a 50 millimeter base even though one wasn't included. It's not like I don't have a pile of them. With the hammer in place, it's going to be really problematic. Dude, come on. <laughs> really problematic to try to get at the rest of the bike and the rider as well. It's just really in the way. So that's probably going to be one of the last pieces to glue on. I did glue the saddlebag on, and I am going to keep this set of extra weapons handy. It wasn't actually supposed to be for him. I believe it is for the behemoth version of him, but I'm just going to stick it on the bike anyway, because why not? So yeah, that's the behemoth. Next up we have Lamas. I know I kept calling her lame ass, but she's pretty awesome with her chainsaw. Probably of the bunch, she is my favorite. It's a pretty simple sculpt. And the hands did not want to really line up, but I just shoved a little bit of green stuff in there and glued and prayed to the dark gods that perhaps she'll go together correctly. I don't know why her pants just remind me of some kind of like 90s raver kid. Not that I would know anything about that. One thing that bears mentioning, and I've mentioned it before with the Eden stuff, is it's a lot more close to 30 millimeter scale than to the 28 millimeter. They're pretty big figures. And remember, she's just a kid. He is a giant in power armor. Here is... Oh, I don't remember her name. That's okay. She was probably the easiest of the bunch to put together, and I really liked her, and there's a little bit of green stuff there to fill in the gap. I'm probably going to end up painting her first because I like her and she seems fairly simple, especially compared to Lamas and her rock and chainsaw that they had flames painted all over, which I should try to create, although I really cannot compete with Mohan's style of painting. We'll give it a try. We have Fenrir here next, and we had a problem with Fenrir. He was missing a hand completely, and so I've just basically stuck a blob of green stuff on and the remainder of the shaft of his hockey stick was nowhere to be seen. And I hate to write Happy Games Factory for just a single hand. It's not a big deal. So once this is nice and hard, and I'll go ahead and file that down into a more hand-like blob shape. Again, this guy is just a crazy sculpt. He's wearing capris. He's on roller skates. He's got a bladed hockey stick. Uh, handlebar mustache and a mohawk. He's just a fun guy. And it seemed that Barzain was mentioning somewhere in the fluff these guys are cannibals or something as well. So, hey, even more fun going on here. So if you're in true, in true, interested in post-apocalyptic stuff, give the Eden line a good look. As I've mentioned many times in this video, you only need really one of these boxes to get a good, quick, simple skirmish game. You've got everything you need there other than dice and something to measure with. And the rules are pretty intuitive. They're not super complicated. And despite English being their second language, the rules are pretty easy to parse out. Whoa. The rules are pretty, to part, pretty easy to parse out. And despite the softness of the metal, really not bad models overall. They do require a little bit of cleanup. I don't recommend these for beginner modelers. But, you know, if you're watching this stuff, you're probably not a beginner if you're into the obscure stuff as it is. With that said, I appreciate you watching. This is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying see you later and check out some of our other videos. Bye-bye.